we're going to talk about something that we see in the office that's mechanical in nature, um, but it doesn't get a lot of publicity or attention per se. And this is pain that runs right down the inside of the shoulder blade with or without neck pain and is typically just on one side. And a lot of times this is diagnosed as something like rib pain because it is in the area of the ribs, but most often it can be, it can come back, it comes back to this nerve called the dorsal scapular nerve. And this nerve runs out of the neck on both sides through these deep scalene muscles of the neck and then it dives deep under the traps in the levator as it runs down that mid back and the whole time it goes down it stays right on the inside of your scapula so i want to show you um on this little model here uh what we're talking about here with this nerve okay so Here's the traps, okay? So we're gonna get rid of those. And then as you look here, here's your levator, levator scapula. And then here is that nerve that we're talking about, right there. So that's your dorsal scapular nerve, okay? So there's your scalenes right through here and it comes through those and then it comes right under that levator scap, and then it comes right down under the rhomboids. So there's a rhomboid, I'm gonna hide that. There's a rhomboid, hide that one. And you can see that it's coming right down the inside of that shoulder blade. Okay, so a person may come in complaining of stabbing, knife-like, um, throbbing pain right down that inside border of the scapula, or they might have burning pins and needles or radiating pain down there. And it could be even across the shoulder blades a little bit, or they may even feel like it's underneath the shoulder blade itself. And when I hear this type of presentation, I'm thinking more nerve-like pain. So as this nerve is going along this path, it's going over, under, and through so many different structures that there's a lot of places that it can potentially get caught or trapped. Um, these being like what we just saw here, uh, the scalenes, the levator, scap, and the rhomboids. Now, one thing with this that we need to rule out is if there is something in the neck itself that's causing this type of pain. There can sometimes be some similar symptoms there. So this would be something like a disc herniation. And we can rule that out by doing different neurological testing like muscle strength, uh, sensory stuff, and reflexes. And then we can also have the patient go through different movements, diff different head and neck movements to see if it changes anything. And if it doesn't, um, or everything is normal there, then we're thinking more of like a muscular tension issue where there's some sort of tightness somewhere um, that's trapping that nerve, causing that pain to occur. And typically, this occurs most at these deep scalene muscles, even if somebody isn't dealing with neck pain at all. They don't have any neck pain. Their main, the majority of their symptoms is right, right by that shoulder blade. So a couple things that tend to, to make this worse is turning the neck to the side of the pain. If it's on that right side, turn the head to the right, um, turning the head to that side and extending backwards, uh, laying on your stomach um, while sleeping and cranking that head to the same side. And then even kind of slouched posture over time can cause this to develop. So also we need to figure out kind of what the patient is engaged in as far as activity and work life. Um, because a lot of a lot of overhead movement and a lot of reaching out in front can also cause this to occur. So just kind of looking at some real world examples here. Um, let's say you're a painter, a carpenter, or electrician. Uh, you're doing a lot of a lot of work 
overhead and reaching out and even maybe if you're if you're painting up here turning that head to one side so that can cause this nerve to get trapped through there um, if you're doing a lot of like Olympic weightlifting um, a lot of snatches and a lot of cleans um, with that head that's like that kind of juts forward um, this can cause these tissues back here to tense up and tighten and then eventually when it gets to the point that it's severe enough, it starts to trap that nerve. And then finally, desk work, um, a lot of desk work. If we're doing this and sitting like this for long periods of time, there's a lot of traction being placed on this nerve while all these tissues and all these muscles back here are trying to pull you upright. And over time, it can, uh, again, trap down and get caught through some of those structures through there. So I wanted to introduce you to that today um, next week, we're going to go over some treatment in the office um, along with some home exercises uh, that you can do if you're dealing with any of this to kind of keep this under control, keep it under wraps. So stay tuned for that. Um, let me know if you have any questions and we will see you next week.